It has been a rough couple of weeks for the SPY, the broad markets overall. And unfortunately, it looks like there's still more pain ahead. The question is exactly how is that going to unfold and how to use it to manage your trades and make new ones, right? So let's take a look at the SPY ETF as it slides lower here. And remember, before we look at the charts, important reminder that trading and investing can be extremely risky business. Therefore, it's your responsibility to evaluate any information, opinion, advice, or other content contained in this video. All right, so here we have a daily chart of SPY ETF. And if you're new here, I'm Hima Reddy, and I use technical analysis, specifically price, market timing, and momentum to boost my trading and help my tribe boost their trading. Now, what you see here are Japanese candlesticks plotting daily price bars, every candle representing one day of price action. You see my RSI power zones down below, that's my favorite momentum indicator, and I deploy my market timing techniques along the way. That's in my loss forecasting trading system. Now, I decided today, instead of going from monthly down to weekly, down to daily, like I usually do, I did that analysis on my own and I'm just getting right to the daily chart. So what we can see here that we zoom into this more recent action is that price has been sliding steadily lower since the two events of the past couple weeks here in September. So the first was when the CPI data came out saying that August was still hot for inflation and the market did not like that because it knew that it likely meant that there was going to be more Fed rate hikes. Then on Wednesday, September 21st, the Fed came out and said, yes, not only are we rating, uh, raising 75 basis points today, we see a path of you know pain ahead, kind of warning the market that we're going to be hiking interest rates even more. So all of this just led to kind of a bloodbath the past two weeks. And the question is, now that we're back near the June lows, where are things going ahead? All right, so when it comes to market timing, you have a price target and an associated time. But doesn't this really mean the market's gonna get there in a straight line, okay? It might squiggle and ebb and flow along the way. So in order to account for those nuances in the change of the cycle, I keep my cycle forecast mostly available for my skinny in the market students. So they're getting ES futures, NQ futures, and stock picks from me multiple times a week, and that's where I can really be specific about how we're changing around the cycle, okay? Big picture though, I'll tell you this, we are not in a great position for the SPY, and I do expect it to go lower. How far down and how long it will take to get there are two things I'm gonna detail in my next batch of quarterly reports that I do called the Outlooks, and those will be coming up into October, so keep an eye out. Now on the price action front, you can see that I've already laid out a few supports. Those are price floors down below where price might trade down into at least pause or possibly reverse and price ceilings known as resistance levels that might cap any rebounds. Now I want to show you guys something, okay? This trend line that you see here, it's specifically tying the January 4th high to the March 29th high and you can see how beautifully it was confirmed on August 16th. That's how you draw trend lines, okay? You don't like best fit them to what unfolded. You pick two points of the past and the more significant they are, usually the more important the confirming of the trend line is. So the fact that we confirmed this trend line as cleanly as we did means that I expect that as we progress in time, if there's any recovery, this trend line will be very dominant and have a lot of sellers sort of like living there and pouncing on the market to go short. So knowing that that's up ahead further out, and then knowing that there are some cushions down below. So if we continue lower, if I pull back the history on this chart, again, I decided to stay on one time frame today. So you can see I've taken us back to the pandemic low that was March of 2020, started to recover, and then by September, October, really started to take off to the upside. Okay, everybody remembers this time in the market because you could practically tr throw a dart at a stock, buy it, look at it maybe a couple weeks later and make money, right? Did that happen to you? I get it. We're not in that environment anymore. But that doesn't mean that you won't have opportunities to participate in the market. So coming back to where we are now, if the SPY continues lower, which means the S&P 500 continues lower, E-mini S&P continues lower, maybe you trade the micro E-mini futures, right? If all of those continue to slide lower, there are three key areas that I think that the market could provide a significant pause. On the SPY here, you can see them represented by these three numbers, 349.12, 339.08, 316.41, and they are tied to specific 
measurements on this chart. So I will be sharing those in full again when I do my quarterly outlooks that I'll be doing into October. For now, if you have the numbers, that's a good starting point. So coming back to the short term, I'm going to detail more of what I think will unfold in the skinny day-to-day uh, -day report, but here's the broad picture, okay? Individual stocks will provide opportunities to go short and collect profit, and the SPY is likely to continue lower. I think that we are probably going to break below this June low very imminently. However, when you come back down to the RSI power zones, my favorite momentum indicator, there are a couple things going on here when it comes to advanced techniques that I teach in the advanced RSI power zone system that hint that, yes, we might push lower, but the next push lower on the SPY may not go that far before there's a recovery bounce. Now, again, that recovery bounce has a couple areas of headway. Not only this big picture trend line, but all of these blue resistance levels, including one more here, okay, 388.42. So there is a lot of headway if the market tries to bounce. But because of where the RSI power zones are returning to, and most importantly, because of how the RSI power zones for the SPY is relating back to itself, okay? This is not relative strength, guys. This is a unique look at RSI power zones that I teach in the advanced RSI system. Because of that relationship, I think that whatever push lower we get next will be maybe a couple days, then there'll be a little bit of a recovery, but I don't expect that recovery to really be that strong. And if that recovery unfolds, then we might see another opportunity to go short and ride and move down because a lot of traders come to me and they say things like, well, you know, I sold because the market broke this June low and then I got stopped out on a rebound. Right, because selling breaks in one direction or the other is a little bit of a dangerous game if you don't have a wide enough protective stop order on your trade. For me, I would much rather sell into recovery strength in the weak market. That's how you play the game in a bear market, guys. Or if this was a bull market, reminding us of not too long ago, which would be buying dips, right? Buying weakness along the way in a strong market. So selling strength strategically, say that 10 times fast, selling strength strategically, right? Not just selling willy nilly and then covering your shorts by buying. That's the kind of opportunities that are going to lie ahead. I believe in not just the next few weeks, but the months and probably likely into 2023. So here you have it, a roadmap for what to watch for in the SPY. And remember to subscribe, like, comment down below, share what value you've got from this video. Remember to join my tribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you on the inside. You can sign up and link to join my tribe and get my hot, timely, actionable updates as soon as I publish right to your inbox.